You guys made a pretty significant change to your team at the trade deadline. The franchise much more committed to the small ball, all-in approach. What input did you have in deciding this was going to help you guys get to where you needed to go? I mean, I let them choose that. <laughs> I'm just out there to play basketball and try to win games. Uh, I feel like, you know, whatever decision they make, uh, they put all the work in, all the research and all the other st stuff. So I just go out there and hoop. And they made a trade so far. It's been, uh, it's been pretty good. How does going with that approach maximize your skill set? Well, mine and Russell's, you know, obviously it gives us more spacing uh, to be able to get to the rim and create opportunities for our teammates. Um, you know, granted, Clint was great for us for his last few years. Like, I'm proud of him, the way he's, he grew as a player, as a person. Um, you know, now he has another opportunity in Atlanta. But, um, you know, it's more spacing. It's more opportunities for our guards to drive and be able to attack the rim. And then we get shooters. So um, that's, that's pretty cool. I've had so much fun watching this. I don't know how exhausting it is, but it's really fun to watch. No, it's not exhausting. The first game that you guys played after the trade deadline and sort of committed to all of the small ball idea was against the Lakers. And there were a lot of people who said, oh, see, that's the game where it's really going to hurt them. And the opening tip-off was you against JaVale. <laughs> and the video and photos from that, just that one that's moment. It's pretty funny, right? <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> what did you think as you were going up to do that? That was my first jump ball in the NBA uh, in, in 11 years. but. No, I think, you know, just no matter what, if you're, if you have seven footers or you have six, five, six, six guys, throughout the course of the game, you're always going to give up offensive rebounds. You're going to not get back in transition sometimes. You're going to, the same things are going to happen, you know, throughout the course of the game, no matter whether you're small or you're big. So I think for us, it's a conscious effort of, of team rebounding. Um, defensive transition, we weren't very good. So now, like, we have quicker guys to make sure we get back. Um, but this is going to be a team effort. We're going to have to rebound. And, each individual has to box out. And we're, we don't have like one great rebounder, so we have to do it as a team. And uh, I think that's going to make it more, um, you know, make guys more locked in to do it. You guys have had fits and starts this season. One thing that's impressed me is you guys have never been afraid to have tough conversations. Yeah. And you've been open about the fact that you've had tough conversations in your locker room between the players about yeah. chemistry. What can you share from that that you think has helped you guys? Tough conversations are needed, especially if you want to get to, you know, the top. I think every every team has won had had tough conversations whether you're you're BSing around or you're not reaching your full potential yet and whatever the reason it is because of that um, and that's where we are like we haven't hit our stride yet either we see all of these other teams are going on winning streaks and things like that we haven't had a full roster or healthy roster um, this entire year which that's the most thing that I'm excited about because you know once the break after the break it's it's go time um, so we're ready to go and I'm just I'm thrilled about what we have in the locker room. How confident are you that the path you're on now can lead to a title this year? I'm very, very confident. You Extremely think? confident. You yeah. think you're going to win it all? Yeah. As long as we stay healthy, obviously, every team feels that way. Um, so as long as we can stay healthy and uh, defensively be on a string, I think which we've almost gotten a rhythm, uh, we're going to be a tough challenge. The All-Star Game is a collection of the NBA's best players. Yeah. Where do you think you rank in that right now? <laughs> what do you mean? Where do you think you rank among the NBA's best players right now? I feel like I'm the best player. Um, yeah, I just, throughout the course of the year, I don't see uh, double teams from anybody else. <laughs> Maybe Dame when he, you know, obviously he's been going on an amazing stretch. But usually you see a double team after you have a 50-point night or 60-point night. If I have an 18-point night, I'm, the next game I'm seeing a double team, which is pretty cool. You know, it's, the NBA has never seen it before um, at half court. Um, so I'm just trying to figure ways to, you know, obviously, you know, be great in that. But you don't, other, you don't need to see another player that can double team. So how coaches scheme for a player it's usually totally tells you than, totally different than any other player in this league, or probably has ever been um, schemed for. It's interesting to me because the way you're schemed by coaches, assistant coaches around the league, reflects one level of fear of you as a player. But then the NBA's own website has an MVP ladder, their rankings for MVP. <laughs> They list the top five players. You're not even in there, James. I know, that's crazy. What do you think of that? And I still lead the league in scoring. Third straight year you've led the league in scoring. Yeah. What I do you think of that? I can't. That's something I can't control. Like, I mean, if, if around the league there's getting double teamed, like if you name the top five players that are getting double teamed around the league, um, there's going to be notice. People are going to say, oh, he's getting double teamed, or he's, he sees a double team. He sees a, a trap at half court every single night. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody's mentioning that, you know? I'm not the type to go out there and say it or, or 
or broadcast it. Like I'm just going to try to go out there and win games, and that's what we've been trying to do. You do have people talking about some of the stereotypes that have blown up around you. Charles Barkley, when they had the All-Star Draft, was saying, oh, no one wants to take James Harden, he's a dribbler. Giannis Antetokounmpo makes a joke on the air about, uh, I want to take someone who can pass. I'm taking Kemba Walker instead of James Harden. I have more assists than him, I think. You ranked 10th in assists going into the All-Star break, and Kemba ranked 36th in assists going into the All-Star break. So I don't, see, I, don't, I don't see what the joke is. But I don't even, I, I didn't even see it. And I, don't, I don't pay attention to stuff like that. Uh, I just know none of them can mess with me. <laughs> Well, Daryl Morey, your general manager, had a great line to kind of address all of that. He said, being different doesn't really get appreciated until it works. Yeah, or when I'm done. Uh, you know, when it's, when it's all said and done, um, you know, they'll appreciate it more. You know, but I wish I could just run, run and with seven feet and run and just dunk. Like, that takes no skill at all. <laughs> I got to actually learn how to play basketball and how to have skill, you know? I'll take that any day. Do you think that in the end, a title is going to give you the respect that you think yeah, you deserve? I mean, it is, and I will get it. You feel confident about that? Yes, very. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.